the biggest spot during the match for me definitely was when Darbin. Uh, Darbin? Who the fuck's Darbin? <laughs> Hi guys, Brian the Scare Lion back with another video. And well, for those of you who don't know, Fate of Fest was last night. It was a pretty incredible show, and um, not as good as Double or Nothing. Uh, I think it was going to be hard to top Double or Nothing, like that was an amazing show. But it was still a really, really, really good show. It's not to say it didn't have its down points. Uh, there were points in the show where it was like, uh, maybe not as good. But with that being said, let's actually talk about what happened at Fighter Fest. So the first match that we saw was the triple threat tag team match between SCU, Best Friends and Private Party. Going into this match, I didn't really know much about Private Party. It was one of them that I'd seen little bits of them online, because I went to check them out, but I'd no really actually known anything about them. But after watching this match, I can definitely tell you that I am a fan of Private Party. They have so much fucking charisma. They are so great in the ring. Like, I absolutely love these two. When it came to some of the biggest spots in this match, it did actually go to Private Party. I mean, that fucking uh, cutter, where the, the two-man cutter was fucking incredible. Basically, um... One of the members, uh, sorry, I'm, I can't really remember the names, it'll get ingrained in me over time. One of the members actually chucked somebody off of the top turnbuckle and the other member came in and hit a cutter. It was fucking incredible. These two are going to go a long way. Like, I could definitely see that happening. Ended up being the best friends, taking the win in this match, hitting strong zero on one of the members of Private Party and actually picking up the 1-2-3 Cassidy. Cassidy was the one that they picked up the victory on. Uh, but I, um, after the match, we got this weird little bit with the Dark Order, and I wasn't a big fan of it. It was underwhelming compared to the last time that we saw them. Uh, I guess it's going to be one of them that we have to wait and see what happens with it, but it did feel pretty underwhelming, this Dark Order part. But this does mean that uh, Best Friends got that first round bye in the tag team tournament. The second match that we got was also in the buy-in. Uh, this was a match that me and Thomas forgot to cover in the actual uh, predictions video. See, when we do a predictions video, I'll pull up the match list so that we can go through it one by one. I need to actually remember because I, I, know, I know that Smiley Kylie had a match against Lever Bates. But it wasn't on the list, so I forgot to read it out. But, um, I Smiley Kylie was meant to face Lever Bates, apparently, but it ended up being Ali taking on Lever Bates in this match. Basically, Lever Bates came out with the whole librarian gimmick, as did uh, Peter Avalon, uh, and they did this whole weird little thing. I've got to say, I don't, I don't really like the librarian gimmick. I mean, it's one of them that could possibly be pushed into something half-decent, but I'm not a big fan of it. I've been waiting for the Ali match, like, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ali, I watched her in Impact, like, she was actually fucking great, um, but this match, it felt a little slow, maybe it's because of the fact that we'd just seen such a high paced match in that uh, triple threat tag team, this match felt a little slow, I, I don't really know what to add to it, it, it was a match, it was a match, I kind of wish that Ali would have saved that first match, to face Brandy Rhodes because that's going to have a big fight feel. Ali chucked in out of nowhere, it kind of threw me off. We saw Avalon getting involved in the match quite a few times. Uh, like he grabbed Ali's leg, uh, he was he chucked the book in that went to Ali or something. Like uh, it was a little bit confusing with the whole Peter Avalon stuff. But uh, we ended up seeing Ali picking up the victory, which I guess gives him momentum going into the whole Brandy Rhodes match. But I, this was the first downfall, really. The next matchup that we saw was the hardcore match between Michael Nakazawa and Alex Jibeli. Uh I don't think we really expected much of a match out of this. I don't think we really expected much out of this match, really, because, well, let, let's be honest, it, it was... Alex Jabili is the head of uh, CEO, which is the gaming thing. Uh, like, like, I don't know much about it, but I, uh, Alex Jabili is the head of CEO, so he's no, re he's no a wrestler. So this match wasn't really going to put on an actual wrestling match. 
but it was fun. So do you know what? We got a fun little match. The the in-ring action was pretty shit, but it was merry a funny little storytelling thing. Uh, we saw gaming buttons getting involved. Uh, we saw an attack with a fucking joystick controller. We saw Alex Jabelli try to drown Michael Nakazawa. We saw somebody trying to actually murder somebody. And we saw the, the little spot with Nakazawa doing the whole baby oil. And they even brought it into play to get uh, Alex Jabelli to slip. And then the ref slipped. Like, it was it was a funny match. It was one of them. But in terms of actual in-ring action, it was shite. So, I, I like the fact that they pushed Mera into it just being for the comedy. It ended up being Michael Nakazawa picking up the win, uh, but I don't think we really expected anything different. Uh, it was a fun match, but a shit match at the same time. Then we go on to the first match of the actual show. This was Sima against uh, Christopher Daniels. I'm glad this match kicked off the show. It, it was really nice with the back and forth between both superstars. They were both incredible and they know each other really well, so it, it, it's good to have Two competitors who can read each other so well in a match. It was one of them, it uh, didn't really push for anything in a storyline afterwards. Uh, it was literally just the match to open the show. But it, it, was, a, it was a good match between two fucking fantastic superstars. Uh, probably would have felt like mere if there were more people involved in this. But do you know what? I, I can't take anything away from you. It was, a, it was a fantastic fucking match between two incredible superstars. Uh, we saw Seema hit the hanging backbreaker a couple of times in this, which I always enjoy seeing. We saw Christopher Daniels doing a lot of playing to the crowd, which I loved. Uh, it's Christopher Daniels. He's got so much charisma. I see you. Uh, the guy's fucking brilliant. Um, the one disappointing thing, uh, at the beginning of the match, we didn't hear him say that it's the worst town that he's ever been in, which kind of drew back for me a little. I love it when he fucking says that. But, I we ended up seeing Seema picking up the victory after hitting the Meteora onto Christopher Daniels. I think it was the right way to go. Gives Seema that little push. Uh, Christopher Daniels obviously can bounce back from taking this loss, but I uh, it was fucking, it was a good match. Really good match to start off the show. The next match that we saw was the triple threat between the women and this was Nyla Rose, Riho and Yuka Sakazaki. Uh, this match, it started off pretty slow, I'm not going to lie, uh, the, the build on it was a little bit slower. But as we eventually got into the match, it became a lot more fast paced. We, we saw a lot of brilliant spots. This one spot for Nyla Rose, where she, where she had, uh, I believe it was Riho, she had, uh, she had Riho on the ropes. And she dived after the top tumbuckle, hitting this fucking like, guillotine knee sort of thing. It was brilliant, like I absolutely loved that. I think the most impressive person in this match, to be honest, had to be Yuka Sakazaki. These Japanese women bring so much into this. I, th I feel like they did it right, having Nyla Rose being a pure, dominant, like, fucking beast that she is. Uh, while having Riho and Yuka trying to play to the whole fucking high-flying and fast-paced sort of stuff to try to take out Nyla Rose. Uh, it was that nice little balance from both. Uh, you did the right thing as well by having Yuka and Riho trying to team up at times to take out Nyla, but also gone back to focusing on the fact that this is still a triple threat and they had to face each other as well. One thing I would like to point out is that Yuka Sakazaki can hit those uh, double stomps fucking brilliantly. Uh, she, she did this one spot where she hit the 619 into the double stomp and I, 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 it was fucking brilliant. I absolutely loved that moment. Riho ended up picking up the victory, hitting the single leg cradle uh, on to Nyla Rose and picking up the 1-2-3 uh, and then we got to see what happened after the match um, Nyla Rose got up and was just pissed off you know, dastardly heel, here we go and uh, blasts fucking Riho uh, Yuka comes in to defend Riho Nyla leaves and then Riho does this like fucking shove sort of like I don't fucking need you sort of thing I like it. It's gone back to the whole heels don't have to be friends, faces don't have to be friends. It could just be one for one. So the next match that we got was the four-way fatal between Hangman Adam Page, MJF, Jimmy Havoc and Jungle Boy. 
First, first thing I want to talk about. Jungle Boy came out on the show as a Luchasaurus. They've been they've been doing it each week on uh, being the elite. I've, I've I've absolutely loved the whole fucking Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus storyline. Hopefully they end up like then at least a little tag team run. Maybe maybe they become a tag team and just stay a tag team for the duration of the tag team tournament. Maybe, but I it'd be it'd be a cool thing to see. The most impressive person in this match definitely definitely. Had to be fucking Jungle Boy. We saw this spot where he hit this moonsault on the three other participants in the match, and it was this like proper mad moonsault. You'd have to go back and watch it. Like his his uh, shins actually hit the top of the turnbuckle on his way fucking down. It was a massive, brilliant spot. Everybody in this match had a great spot. To be fair, at least one great spot each. Jungle Boy had quite a few. Uh, but there was this uh, spot where <laughs> MJF was locking in a sharpshooter onto Hangman Adam Page, and you could tell it was this moment where he's just gone like "fuck you, Brett" sort of thing. It, it, it was it was cool because it played off of the whole tension that MJF built when they were unveiling the championship. I love it. But we ended up seeing Hangman Adam Page picking up the victory on this, hitting the dead eye. Onto Jimmy Havoc and picking up the one, two, three. It gives Page momentum heading into the championship match, which will be happening next month. But I just feel like this match could have been more used to get one of the other guys over because we could have got that momentum from Fight for the Fallen. But having Hangman Adam Page winning the match is never going to be a bad thing, is it? It's Paige, he's fucking brilliant. Another good thing is it doesn't look like uh, the whole stuff between MJF and Paige is over. So I feel like we might actually get to see that at Fight for the Fallen, a one-on-one -on -one competitive match. I guess it's a wait and see thing. Uh, we've got two weeks until it, so you know. Next, we've got a bit of a controversial thing here. Uh, it's Cody Rhodes versus Darby Allen. This match was brilliant, you had Cody actually Having missed of the offense in this match, being the most dominant one in this match, but Darby Allen being the defiant uh, superstar, not taking that pinfall. He's kicking out every time that Cody tries to get the pinfall. Throughout it, you can see Cody getting more and more frustrated due to the fact that he can't put down Darby Allen, no matter what he does. Big thing in this match, Allen, when he finally picked up control of the match, uh, just starts fucking stomping and punching fucking Cody's like fingers. It just looked brutal, and the moment where he bit him, he like he literally just bit his fucking horn. Uh, Darby Allen, the the guy's mad. Um, you could definitely tell that the guy's mad, considering there was this one spot where fucking uh, Cody was throwing him into the ring post, and Darby Allen just literally fucking launched it, launched his body into it, and went smack after the ring post, and then down to the outside, like. This, this guy doesn't care about his fucking body, does he? Like, I didn't know that much about Darby Allen going into it. I'd seen, like, one or two actual matches, and I'd seen, like, a little bit of stuff online for videos. But, Jesus Christ. The biggest spot for me during this match was when Darby Allen actually went for the coffin drop to Cody, who was on the apron. Cody moved out of the way, and bang! Darby Allen, he's back and everything just hit the fucking apron and he tumbled down to the side. I was just praying for his back at this point. Towards the end of the match we got this weird little moment where Cody decided to put Darby into the uh, body bag and then go for a disaster kick. Like, I don't know why he used the body bag, maybe it was, uh, I mean, I, if you look at it for a whole, he's trying to add insult to injury, fair enough, but it doesn't add any more impact, does it? Unless... It's more a case of because of the fact that he can't see it coming, it does more damage. Hmm. It's a thinker. And then he got him out of the body bag and went for the 1 2 3, and Darby Allen still managed to kick out. Cody then removed his belt and started to whip uh, Darby Allen with it. Bear in mind, this is not a no disqualification, so it comes down to referee discretion. Uh, I don't know if they might be playing a bit of, do you know what I own the company, so you do what I say sort of thing. I hope no, but I they were like, 
he, he's using his belt and uh, eventually goes for the one, two, three, but only gets the two count because time runs out. This was a 20 minute match. Uh, all matches seem to have the time limit set, which I absolutely love. And with this one, I do not mind the time running out. The way the whole story went with this match was brilliant. So I couldn't have been happy with, happier with that. What came after was a little bit controversial. Uh, Ty Dillinger came down to the ring with a steel chair in hand and did this unprotected headshot with a chair. I, I, I've seen a lot of posts of people like, oh, you didn't like that uh, chair shot. You must not have watched ECW in the 90s. Or, uh, I, the, like, these posts about Mankind and The Rock and shit like that. But those are the reasons we don't want to see those... those like unprotected headshots with the chairs because they can destroy careers they can absolutely fuck somebody up for life on the one hand i enjoy it because it's wrestling we're seeing this big fucking spot on the other hand we're watching somebody potentially picking up a severe fucking injury um but we did see cody rhodes posting up afterwards uh, he'd received 12 he received 12 staples and apparently no concussion. Uh, he posted this up on Twitter, so that's good news at least. Next match that we got was, well, match of the night. This was the Elite versus the Lucha Bros and Laredo Kid. We saw the Lucha Bros and Laredo Kid doing their entrance first, and obviously it amped up the crowd because, well, Lucha Bros. Um, but then, then we saw the Elite doing their entrance. First we saw Matt and Nick coming out as uh, Ken and Ryo, which was fucking brilliant. And then Omega came out as Akuma. We got the fucking Street Fighter characters for them lot. Uh, it was a nice little blend, considering this was uh, at a gaming event. So it was a nice little blend of the wrestling and the gaming event for the fans who were there. Who were probably there for both, to be honest. Before the match even began, <laughs> we saw the Elite get convincing Justin Roberts to go round one, fight! <laughs> it was fucking brilliant. Uh, you like those little, they don't have to be over the top, just these little funny moments to happen in a match that's, you know, is still going to be fucking competitive. And this match really did not disappoint. During this match, so many fucking super kicks from everybody involved. Uh, I think the majority of them actually came from the Lucha Bros and Laredo Kid, but everybody in this match just super kick after super kick after super kick after super kick you know super kick party it was fucking brilliant i loved every second there we actually saw this tope suicida hit quite a few times as well um i love it the high octane moves that they always keep the crowd entertained they always push mer and mer for this like fast-paced fucking excitement and in a match like this you, that's what you need Fast paced excitement. We saw a spot where Matt Jackson was hitting the Northern Lights, Northern Lights suplexes. And he, he was hitting the, well first he was hitting them on Laredo Kid. And then Phoenix came in and he was hitting them on Phoenix. And then Pentagon came in and he did this one fucking big Northern Lights suplex on both Pentagon and Phoenix. It was a great fucking spot. We saw this one spot where um, basically just beforehand, the Lucha Bros and Laredo Kid had hit super kicks onto the Elite. The Elite came back with a Harogan to all three members of, well, the Lucha Bros and uh, Laredo Kid. This Laredo Kid was really fucking impressive. Like, I, I, again, I knew nothing about him going into this match, but yes, he was really, really fucking impressive. It eventually was the Elite who picked up the victory on this. With Kenny Omega hitting the one winged angel and getting the one, two, three. A, a really high paced match. Uh, you had your little comedy moments with a hard organ. You had uh, some high octane moves uh, like these. So many fucking super kicks. Uh, the amount of tope suicidas. Like there was so much going on in this match. It was fucking incredible. Kept the crowd entertained. Kept the fans at home entertained. I'm guessing he even kept fucking Justin Roberts entertained. Uh, uh, 
It was fucking brilliant from start to finish. 100% match of the night. So at this point they said that uh, Fighter Fest was over. So as soon as they brought down the lights, that would be AEW done for the night. But when they brought the lights back up, there would be one more match, uh, but it'd be unsanctioned. This was John Moxley versus Joey Janela. Now the build up to this was confusing because they had advertised the match. Uh, so like we were like, so this match has gone ahead. But then they were like, well, it's a non-sanctioned match now, but they didn't really have any proper storytelling going into it. So it was kind of like, oh, what's going on here? But as for the match itself, it was fucking brilliant. John Moxley's new entrance, I, I like it. I, I really do like it. It has that whole prison fucking background uh, video playing. I, I, I enjoyed it. The weapons in this match, the weapons in this match were fucking unbelievable. Uh, we saw your basic weapons, obviously, like, I think we saw four, maybe maybe even five or six fucking tables. Um, we saw chairs, we saw kendo sticks, like, you know, your standard uh, wrestling weapons. Uh, and then, we saw a chair wrapped with barbed wire, two boards, covered in barbed wire and so many thumbtacks two bags of thumbtacks oh Jesus Christ some of the spots that I probably should talk about in this definitely that fucking elbow drop from Joey Janela onto Dean Ambrose who was led out on a table on the outside of the ring Joey Janela had climbed up on a ladder on the inside of the ring and the fucking height he dropped for was brilliant like, you could, you could just see that this, that, that, it could have done some proper fucking damage. Uh, it looked like one of the tables that were meant to break, didn't it? You could clearly see uh, Joey Janela, like, his legs bouncing off of that table. So that was a bit unfortunate, but the spot itself was fucking brilliant. We saw this spot where Dean Ambrose did a fireman's carry over the top rope and out onto a fucking board that had been laid out with, covered in barbed wire. And Joy Janela got t pure tangled up in the fucking barbed wire. At this moment, I'm like, how do you fucking prepare your body for something like that? And the truth is, I don't think you can. You can't even prepare your body to hit fucking barbed wire. We had a chance of you sick fuck to which John Moxley actually bowed to the crowd. It was fucking brilliant. I think the biggest spot has to go to the thumbtacks. Uh, Joey Janela was on his back, like... Dean Ambrose poured out the thumbtacks and took his shoes off. I was already cringing at this point. I could feel it in the bottom of my feet just fucking talking about it. Um, he went for it. He went to go and drop him feet first onto the thumbtacks. But then Joy Janela stopped it. But then he ended up doing like this fucking flip onto it. And Jesus Christ, he landed hard on them thumbtacks. And then he, then he still picked him up and fucking put him foot first onto the thumbtacks. And Joy Janela, I fucking love this guy. I swear to God, I love this guy. After all that being done to him, he was like, Come on! Fucking come at me! Oh, it's like, fucking yes. This is the sort of fucking messed up shit we want for a John Moxley match. The match did end up ending after John Moxley put out some meth thumbtacks and hit his uh, double arm DDT, uh, I think that's just what we're calling it for the minute, onto Joey Janela on the thumbtacks and picked up the one, two, three. Both men finished this match absolutely covered, covered in fucking thumbtacks, it was incredible. But what happened after the match? I was expecting maybe Chris Jericho to come out and blast Dean Ambrose to get like a bit of revenge, but no, we saw Kenny Omega coming out and getting his revenge. And he absolutely decimated John Moxley on this. Uh, attacking him with the microphone stand, um, throwing him into the drums, just twatting the fuck out of him. We see John Moxley being carried back to the back, and then fucking uh, Kenny Omega runs out again with a trash can and just starts fucking laying into him. Then hits the double arm DDT 
and you know what, it was fucking brilliant. A great way to end the show. And there you go, that was Fighter Fest. An absolutely brilliant show. Not as good as Double or Nothing, but I don't think it was even going to try to be as good. When it comes to the punishments, I was the one that lost, so I will be facing the punishment on this. Um, also, I got it wrong. The first video on Brits Talk Wrestling will actually be the predictions for Fight for the Fallen, which is happening in two weeks. Uh, it's literally the day before... Uh, Extreme Rules, so I will be then Beth for them. It's going to be kind of tricky then Beth, but do you know what we'll get through it? But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to butt fuck that like button. Peace.